What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. You guys know that I've got a penchant for talking, but I'm going to try and give you a review of the Sidekick 4G for T-Mobile in under 7 minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. Let me give you a real quick refresher of the specs. It's got a 3.5 inch capacitive touchscreen, the resolution of 480 by 1800, weighs 5.7 ounces, being powered by Android 2.2. It's got pretty cool slide out QWERTY keyboard. It's got Samsung's Cortex A8 Hummingbird processor, same processor that's powering the Galaxy S lines of phones. And it's got a Samsung processor because it's built by Samsung. On the back, it's got a three megapixel camera. On the front, it's got a VGA camera for video call. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in with reception. This phone does quite a bit, but it's not going to make good phone calls. It's not going to be of much use to you. In my 20 call tests throughout various areas of Southern California where I'm at, I experience almost perfect. This is the first phone I've had perfect reception on. Not one dropped call, not a pop. Call quality was absolutely fantastic. People couldn't tell if I was on a cell phone or a landline. The transition from 4G to 3G was not a problem at all. And surprisingly for you speakerphone fans, the speakerphone uh, works quite loudly on this guy. So that won't be a problem for you. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the design because it is sort of interesting design. If you've ever seen a previous generation Sidekick, uh, this maintains that form and feel, meaning you've got four buttons uh, on the corners. Uh, phone is a bit awkward to hold up to your ear because it is a little bit on the thicker side. It's not a thick phone, but the design feels a little bit strange for being held up to your head. And it took me about two days to get used to it. It'll probably take you just around the same. So the four buttons here I actually found to be extremely annoying. Uh, using many Android devices in the past where the buttons are lined up across the bottom, uh, that's what I was used to. I thought that I'd get used to this after four or five days, and I never did. So you have your typical sidekick buttons, or your typical Android buttons. You've got your menu, your back, and your home. Uh, so you're going to have to navigate where those are. You also have a new jump button we'll talk about in just a minute. The button array continues to annoy with the power and lock button on the bottom right hand side of the phone. Oftentimes you don't know where it is if you've got the alignment to the side. It's sort of hard to tell which way you're holding the phone, which way you're looking at it. Oftentimes I pull out of my pocket and I was trying to slide the screen up backwards or looking for the lock button and it just wasn't there. I would have liked it definitely on one of the ends, either the top or the bottom, um, depending on how you are holding the phone. Something to keep in mind, it was something that I got used to eventually, uh, but it really did become an annoyance to me. Uh, so this jump key that we talked about is sort of keeping up with the sidekick's social media uh, and messaging features of the phone. All it allows you to do is open up a shortcut. So if I were to slide this open and I hit the jump button and it shows you what you can do here. If I hit the jump button and held down A, I'd go right into contacts. You can set all kinds of different shortcuts here for that jump key. Uh, it is a nice feature and something that actually comes into play in the lock screen as well. When you unlock the device, if you slide it down, you get access to your jump menu settings. Slide out one more time. There you go. Get access to your jump menu settings. Actually, have to slide it up. Slide it the other way, you'll go right into the phone itself. Kind of interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. The sliding mechanism on the Sidekick, we don't have the swivel out that we've seen on previous generations. What we've got is a slide out. And it's a pretty cool mechanism that works very, very well. Um, I wasn't worried about build quality. I did this thing about 20, 30 times in a row. Uh, continued to feel solid. I didn't have any sort of uh, dinging noise in the spring or any sort of looseness that came up. Uh, when the screen does pop up, it reveals a keyboard, uh, which is hands down the best keyboard I have ever tested on any mobile phone. Any phone that's come out in the past probably about two and a half years, I've reviewed about 80% of them. Uh, and this is hands down the best keyboard. The keys are spaced nicely, they're spaced evenly, they've got a great tactile feel to them. If you are a heavy email or a texter and keyboard is of paramount uh, importance to you, you are going to be hard pressed to find any keyboard, physical or on screen, that is going to be better than the Sidekick 4Gs. It is absolutely amazing. The screen resolution here was kind of blah, 480 by 800. Screens look a little bit washed out, but it was okay. Looking for a beautiful, vibrant screen, the Sidekick 4G is not going to be for you. Speed, it was relatively fast. Uh, it does have the Cortex A8 processor in there. It is single core, but it's a very capable processor. Uh, something that we've seen power the Galaxy S series of devices, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. This phone can handle multitasking, it can handle HD video, 
without any problem. On the 4G network, I got pretty fast speed. It's going to depend on where you are. I got about 3.5 megapixels down, or 3.5 <laughs> megabits per second, rather, uh, down. This is by no means a slow phone. You're getting some high-end features in sort of a lower-end-esque package. So you're getting that Cortex A8 Hyper processor, which is quite nice, but you're sacrificing on the camera department. This takes average pictures at best, a 3-megapixel sensor. Uh, you're not going to want to use this to uh, become Ansel Adams. There are some OS tweaks as well to the uh, Android operating system to sort of make this sidekick-esque. Let me go ahead and show you what those are. First, you got the three buttons right here. You can jump right into apps. You can see there are some quick messaging features. A lot of what makes this a sidekick is actually found in the widgets. Let me jump right in and show you some of these. And these are really nice features I'd like to see make its way to other Samsung built Android devices. So we've got things, the standard ones you've seen, group texting is a really nice feature. It lets you text directly to groups. Uh, and one of the other features that I really liked actually is something called sticky message. If you ever received a text with directions in it or a recipe, you don't want to have to keep referencing back to messages. You can actually sticky that right to your home screen. Uh, really a very nice feature. Uh, the home screen, you've got options for to move uh, to move the screens around if you'd like. You've got your typical array of Android screens here. Uh, the response was actually pretty good. Battery life was very nice on this device as well. It's able to get through a full day even with live wallpapers. Overall, this phone definitely is a worthy, worthy phone to be in your pocket if messaging and email is important to you. If you're looking for an absolute powerhouse, the dual core and the latest and greatest specs, this is not going to be the one for you. If you just want a phone that's going to work, this one is the way to go. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and this is at 6 minutes and 49 seconds. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.